Welcome to a bonus episode of the K-Swap 240 presented by Turn 14 Distribution. The 240 is getting put away for the winter time, but before we do that, I wanted to give you guys a breakdown of what it costs to put a K-motor into an S-chassis. Welcome to this bonus episode of the K-Swap 240. And today we are gonna discuss what it costs to put a K into your S chassis. We've got our fancy table out. That's We've right. got our fancy laptop. All We've fanciness. got some fancy numbers. Yes. I feel almost like an accountant today. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just get right down to it. Uh, this swap is, I personally think, not that expensive. It just does require a lot of effort. Mm -hmm. And I think what you guys watched is Kind of the development of it, right? Yeah. Like if this was an LS swap going into this chassis, already there's a ton of parts that have been built for it. Siki makes a ton of them. So it kind of takes a lot of the small little guesswork yeah. out of it like we had to go through with, mm. with the engine mounts and everything. But um, so motor wise, I ended up buying this K24 and a transmission as a complete set for 800 Canadian. And I sold the transmission for 500 bucks. Did you really? Wow. Yeah which was kind of crazy. Wheeler and dealer Pete strikes hey, again. Hey, listen, some guy needed one for his TSX, said uh, the junkyard wanted a thousand bucks and he'd give me 500 for mine. I said, done deal. Wow. And he never came back. So that means the transmission worked. And so that's a $300 that K24. That is a, technically a $300 wow. K24. That's gotta be a world record. That's like record. 230 bucks maybe US. Yeah. So that was a great deal. The BMW ZF five-speed transmission was also an amazing deal for $80. Yeah. To be fair, I bought two. So we bought one from a wrecking yard with that we knew had 144,000 kilometers on it. The one that I bought for 80 bucks mm -hmm. was one that I just bought off of Kijiji off of a guy, uh, the Canada Cra the Canadian Craigslist, yeah. Kijiji. And uh, it was unknown mileage. So that one's actually sitting over there. It seems to be fine. I think you'd have to say 200 bucks. That's a reasonable price for that. That's a reasonable for price that. for that Just transmission. Just still dirt cheap for such a strong 100%, transmission. 100%, 100%. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, it, where it gets expensive is the Kamiata adapter and flywheel. That right. is a $1,500 combo and we're by the way we're just going to list everything in u.s prices from here on out right um yeah so that's a, a 1500 hundred dollar combo so that does raise your investment quite a bit but at the same time it's not it's terrible not crazy money right? for a custom flywheel and an adapter plate yeah those are big chumps, chumps it, exactly of it's, it's a lot of work and it works flawlessly so um you had a shifter they don't actually sell it separate i was able to, to work out a deal with them i think it was 200 dollars so I'm sure if you email Kami out and say, hey, look, I just want to buy the, the shifter along with some other stuff, that they'll probably sell it to you. Uh, the S2000 header. Yeah. So instead of making a custom header, we ended up chopping off the flange, putting a K-series flange on there. Vin welded it up. Uh, the header I got for 80 bucks, uh, $50 for the flange, yeah. and probably fab work, 150 bucks. Yeah, a couple hours work. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. Around there. Yep. The intake manifold, I think I bought it for dirt cheap, $50, and the JSP adapter on it is $140, so you roughly- say 350 into it? Uh, two, 200 bucks. Oh, okay, 200 bucks into it. 200 bucks into that, so still, too. to get a manifold on there, I mean, that was with a throttle body and everything, yeah. so that is a huge deal. A and lot of guys go with the more expensive Skunk 2 manifold. Yes. Like the Pro Series Yeah, and you know what, is. and I looked at all of that pricing originally, and that's why I went this way. It did require a lot more labor to work, mm -hmm. but at the cost, like those things I think are $600. Enough, I think. Yeah, and yeah. then you have to add a throttle body yeah, to it. Yeah. So it's almost $1,000 into it, and uh, I don't know if the gains are going to be as big as everybody would expect them versus the, the, the S2000 one, yeah, right? The S2000 so, one makes good power on hey, S2000. Like making 200 wheel on this thing to me was pretty dang good, it right? It was good, yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's a bottleneck by any means. The fuel system, obviously I went a little bit overboard on. You went big there, PT. You I, went I did, big. but that's for future proofing, right? Yeah. And so the radium, the whole thing with the fuel rail, uh, adjustable fuel pressure regulator, fuel filter, it was 450 bucks. Add a set of ID injectors, which around 400 bucks. 400 dollars. Yeah, so that. it's almost a thousand dollars in the fuel system. You could build that system, like if you use a stock one. It'd be like fifty to a hundred dollars. Yeah. I mean, you just need the stock fuel rail, all that, yeah. a couple adapter fittings to make it work. 
So it can certainly be done much cheaper. That's where you could save a, a bunch of money. Yeah. Uh, the excessive drive shaft, so a custom drive shaft by those guys was $385, which is a smoking deal. It is. It's crazy. All things considered, like I sent them measurements and whatnot. Yeah. And they were like, okay, this is what we're going to do. Sent it, fit up, worked amazing. Yeah. Right? So yeah. if you have any type of custom drive shaft needs, check those guys out because yeah. they can certainly help you out with that. Um, Coil oil cooler was almost two hundred dollars. Yeah, I uh, went, went and you get into all the vibrant fittings and lines. I, I, hundred fifty bucks. Hundred fifty so. bucks. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, fuel and, and yeah. all that jazz. So, uh, sandwich plate, all that kind of adds up pretty quickly there. Uh, the titanium intake mm -hmm. and filter from Vibrant. Yes. I think that was probably around 550 bucks. <laughs> Just material costs are yes. so high on the titanium stuff. You, yeah. Obviously, you could have built an intake for a quarter of that oh. price if you wanted I to. I figure you could probably build a cheap metal intake for $75, yeah. throw a filter on there. Yeah. So. But you wouldn't be balling out of control. No, no, and there were certain things thing. like, yeah, obviously, you know, th th there's some things that I wanted to make look cool and whatnot, so we didn't skip that it was that just area. fun to experiment with titanium, yeah. too. We haven't really played around with it before, so it was, it was an opportunity to 100%. do that. 100%, yeah. super cool. Uh, the, where were we here? Okay, rad hoses, the Koyo Rad, 350 for the, the, the rad, 100 bucks I said for the rad hoses. So you could probably go to your local Napa, source some cheap rubber ones for Yeah, you can get a cheaper bucks. rad too if yeah, you want to. But so, if you're case swapping a car, don't cheap out on the rad. I mean, the rad is a, a very important component of your car, so get a good aluminum rad. Yeah, and say. I'm the same way with the hoses, right? Like yeah. the last thing you want is a, a hose to rupture or leak, mm -hmm. so it's worthwhile spending a little bit of extra money yeah. cutting them up. Yeah, I was. There's places to save money. I wouldn't say save it on the. Don't save in your cooling. No, system. no, don't, not don't at all. Don't do that. Yeah. So, um, and engine and transmission mounts. Those are obviously custom built by mm -hmm. NV Auto. I figure probably five hundred dollars. Just in labor and materials. Yeah, and, and I think that's what they would be selling them for. Right. So, right. Uh, and speaking it, of which, does NV have plans to produce those? We, there's talks about it. I think it's just tough, right? Because it's hard to gauge interest. Uh, some of you have reached out to, to me and said through social media, you know, hey, where can I buy these? I'm really eager to get them. Uh, the best thing to do is just go bug NV Auto on their social media or send them emails or call them, do whatever you need to do and get in touch with them. And once I think they, they're like, okay, we've got enough people mm -hmm. bugging us, we're gonna definitely make these. Yeah. So that, that would be the plan. It's Dove's email, dove, D-O-V, at nvauto.ca? I, I think that's it. I think that's probably yeah. it. There you go. <laughs> Everyone, spam Dove if spam you want to case swap your them away. Uh, so Nam from NV Auto did the wiring. Mm -hmm. We figure that's about another 500 bucks. Yeah. He took the existing harness, converted it. So there was quite a bit of man hours into it there, having to reroute everything and all that jazz. And then used the K-Tuned adapter harness, which I think was $289 from, uh, from K-Tuned. So you figure that. And the Honda at ECU, which is 700 bucks. Not cheap. No, but, but that's about as affordable as you can go on. I was going to say, I don't management. think you've got many other options. You can't just use a stock ECU, plug it in, and it'll no, work. So no. you, you really can't go down that line. Yeah. Uh, there was a bunch of other small K-Tuned products, like power steering, line kit, which I think is $50, uh, thermostat housing and the upper coolant housing, which are both $169 and $129 respectively. Those I think you need, I'm not sure, because if you didn't have them, you couldn't rotate the uh, outlet for the hose. Mm -hmm. And on the back side, the one from the K24 points directly into the firewall. Yeah. So oil pan and the modification, we kind of said $150. Just to cut it and weld it. Yeah, cut it, weld it. Right. You know, if it, it, Again, I mean, we bought a new work. pan, but you could use your old one. Sure. So uh, we figured that. Uh, the Circuit Hero oil baffle was $140, and the Track Tough oil baffle was, I think, $60. Right. If you're building a streetcar, you don't need those, probably? I, I don't know. Yeah. You, you may or may not, right? Yeah. So you could maybe save some costs there. Yeah. And I think that as a total, came down to almost eight thousand dollars right so um not cheap by honda standards but at the same time for a swap a custom swap eight grand is i think eight is grand cheap. is pretty cheap exactly considering what we have which yeah. is pretty awesome is. and unique it is and i think it's such a uh, great platform to start off of right really like a crate motor 
from GM or Ford or anyone is going to be more than $8,000 just for the engine. Yeah, 100%. So to do this whole thing for that, I think is yeah. pretty incredible. Which, I, I again, to me is, is not expensive by any means. No, and there are places like we've talked about where you could have saved some money. Yeah, and I did a little bit of calculating on that. If you were, for example, to use your stock fuel system uh, from an S2000, stock rad, no oil cooler, no baffling, build your own mounts, like do your own wiring, you could probably get this down to four thousand dollars, five thousand dollars. You right. know, all things depending. Like, yeah. there's certainly ways if you want to get creative, you can do this on the cheap. I think, on average, though, most of you, if you're looking to do this, this swap, are going to spend anywhere between six and eight. Right. Right. Like that's that's what I would really budget, budget for. Yeah. In that sense, so. And that puts you in the ballpark of like case swapping a Honda, like. R-E-K. Like, by the time you run the numbers on that, I bet you probably would still cost you six or seven. Yeah, and I mean, like, an SR swap, if this was a KA car mm -hmm. and you're putting an SR20 into it, it's probably around five grand, yeah. right? Like, once you get into everything. So yeah. it's uh, it's definitely, I think, a excellent swap in terms of value. Yeah. And now begs the question, what's next? Yeah, what right? do we do next? I think we've been hinting at that a fair yeah, bit already. Yeah, of course we have. The, the, it's it's no needs, real surprise. She, she needs some boost, Peter. Yes, she needs some boost. Yes, and that will be next year. Yes. We're going to go with boost. There's going to be a bit of a challenge figuring out a manifold. Uh, some of the KS2000 guys are building manifolds, so I might try to do that. I'm Obviously, I don't want to go down a custom way because then it makes it hard for you guys to kind of follow down that path as well mm. if you got to build your own custom manifold. Yeah. So hopefully we can find a solution or someone if, you know, we build a custom one that can continue to build it on. Right. right? I mean, maybe somebody like Full Race or our buddy Devin is talking about developing yeah. K-Swap headers for S2000s, which presumably would fit pretty well in this yeah. car. Yeah, I mean, there's there's not a lot of space in the S2000 there either, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So I think that might be a bolt-up solution for us. So yeah. we'll, we'll see how that pans out. It'll be interesting to see if there is a bolt-on way to go yeah 100%. or if we have to go custom or not i'm puzzled though why we were seeing oil pressure drop the way we were at the racetrack yeah considering the extent we went to back in that pan like we put baffles everywhere and i think that's the problem maybe though. maybe maybe there's so much baffling that it's restricting flow back to the pickup it, yeah because i think puzzling. we have baffles like above yes and then to the sides um, and maybe we need to get rid of that one baffle up top or mm. drill some holes where there's easier access to the sump, right? Yeah, yeah. There's something going on there, I think. We've actually been talking with uh, a few different people about trying to figure that out. So we, I think, next season we'll, uh, we'll have to try to yeah, figure we'll, that Yeah, we'll definitely get a solution figured out, and mm -hmm. whether that is a fully custom oil pan or mm -hmm. maybe making modifications to that. Truthfully, I would like to see us... You know, work with someone to build a custom oil pan. Yeah. Because I think that's kind of the, the better option. Then you guys, if anybody looking to do this, you don't kind of have to go down that road where you got to get the you got to make the cuts, and then all it takes is someone with a little bit of mismeasurement, or yeah. you know, we have a, a set one. I don't know. Like, I mean, yeah. I'm sure NV can make that for you all day long, but I would like to see a, a fully custom oil pan. Well, Peter, is that a wrap on this? I think thing? that is. I, I, the one last thing um, I, I want to mention is just the chassis in itself. Mm -hmm. uh, the brakes on the car on track, I think that was one of the one yes. small issues yes. that we had. Like everything else works great it in the did. car, but the brakes are a little bit touchy. They do lock up. We actually had Tom from Core 4 Motorsports reach out to us mm -hmm. and said, hey, I watched your video. I noticed that you guys have some issues with the, the lockup. And he's actually gone through extensive research uh, to get these cars, the S chassis, with non ABS to get it to work properly. So we're going to be working closely with him. And, and the car was otherwise really good at TMP. Oh, yeah, I mean, I it did a 121.7, and looking back at like our lap time leaderboard yeah. and seeing how good that is <laughs> well, right out of the box. And I mean, we literally like put this car together yeah. and then went ripping. Yeah. And it went that fast. Yeah. I mean, come on. Like yeah. first time out, like chassis or the motors rubbing on the tri or on the on the chassis. Like yeah. there was a, a few of the minor issues and it was still hauling ass. Like a brand new Ford Mustang GT is a 122 car. Yeah. This is faster than a Mustang GT. Which is yeah. Like awesome. It's faster than our, our K swap DK, like mm -hmm. right out of the box. So yeah, what a great package. I'm I'm stoked to see this car with a turbo, with brakes that work with like a few other little fine tuning and man, yeah, it's gonna be It's, it's gonna be awesome. Yeah. So those are all good things and that's what you can expect in season two. So I think it's time we put a wrap on the 240 and by wrap, 
I mean a car cover, because it's right. going to sit here for the next little while until our Canadian weather says, well, so long, winter. Time Which, to get serious again. Yeah, and we will be back. So thank you for watching. As always, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe. Yes. And if you're feeling generous, check out our Patreon page. Throwing us a couple bucks never hurts. Help us turbocharge this car. You can even buy some hats, some swag at speedacademy.shop, or even some go-fast parts. I jumped ahead of season. That's right, right. Sorry, Who knows what season three will hold? Let's take one season at a time. All-wheel we'll drive, you know. All-wheel <laughs> drive, that's right. All the Honda guys are doing yeah, it. Yeah, we, we might as well. <laughs> so. Well, Peter, is that a wrap on this I think thing? that is. I, I, the one last thing...